If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? Uh, I could grab a caterpillar apple and put it inside, and then he would eat inside the apple. There you go. If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? Kelton? Uh, and a... With lots of sticks and leaves. If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? It would live in your bed. Colton, if you had a caterpillar, where would it live? Um, in, a, in a cage with grass on it. If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? I would, I would get a bowl, a, a bowl, like, I would get a bowl with so many leaves that it overfilled and let it go in and on the top and give it and have it a stick to hang on when it turns into a chrysalis. If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? Um, I would build it a porch. <laughs> 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 if, um, if you had a caterpillar, where would it live? If you had a caterpillar, where would it live? It would live in an aquarium. And where would you, where would your caterpillar live? On my toes. On my shoes. <laughs> okay, right about here in the conversation, we notice a shift from real to fantasy. Before this, the caterpillar was living in environments that caterpillars live in. They have leaves, they're in an aquarium, they're living in a bowl, things like this. This is where we typically see caterpillars. From here on, from the toe, it would live on my toe. This opens up a whole different way of thinking for the children, and now they're engaging in more fanciful ideas. Remember that the idea here is not to communicate knowledge and skills, facts, the idea here is to communicate thinking and the possibilities of thinking. We can have logical discussions about fantasy, even though you may find that hard to believe. The idea is simply to get them thinking. It doesn't have to be grounded in reality right now. This toe idea, it would live on my toe, and then I could say, well, if it lived on your toe, how long would it live? And she may say, oh, two years. And then I might say, oh, okay. Well, then how are you going to take a bath? Because just does the caterpillar need to take a bath? And you have to take a bath. Even though it may appear silly and not related to education, it is. It may not be related to facts, knowledge, and skill. It is related to thinking. Knowledge and skills serve thinking, but we have to get children to think, and then we can get those knowledge and skills. Listen to where the conversation goes now. <laughs> and if you had a caterpillar, where would it live? Well, my dad would probably eat it, so it would live in his stomach. <laughs> and if you had a caterpillar, where would it live, sir? Um, in a pile of leaves outside. <laughs> and where would your caterpillar live if you had one? Um, if I had a caterpillar, I would put in my brother's bed and make him jump right out. <laughs> After you get these bizarre, fanciful ideas, then you move the idea into thinking in terms of math, thinking in terms of science, thinking in terms of social sciences or social studies. They can always be fanciful, and then we can think logically about a fanciful idea. In fact, a fanciful idea, let's say it's my brother's stomach or my stomach, that fanciful it probably could never happen, 
would be a better way of getting kids to think critically about math than I have a caterpillar and I need to make it walk across the street. How long will it take me to walk the caterpillar across the street? That would be a more traditional way of approaching a caterpillar in math or something. The caterpillar in math could be, if you had a caterpillar, how long would it take it to get to your stomach? If you had a caterpillar, how long would it take for it to get to your stomach? If you had a caterpillar, how long would it take for it to get to your stomach? In all of these cases, in all of the responses, the length of time from mouth to stomach is going to vary based on the length of the esophagus. Not that they need to know the word esophagus. I'm talking to adults here. The size of the caterpillar. If it's a small one, it's it will take a different length of time to get to the stomach than if it's a short one or a medium-sized one. All of these variables, getting kids to think about, okay, this choice, making this decision about the length of the caterpillar is going to affect this other thing. That's all we're doing here. Changing where your caterpillar lives if you had a caterpillar and you were going to put it anywhere in the world that you wanted to, where would you put it? I would put it in the desert. I would put it in, okay, let's just say the desert. I would put it in the desert. Does it rain in the desert? Well, there's not a lot of water in the desert, so how does that affect what we have to do to keep the caterpillar alive? I suppose the way, another way to see this whole idea or understand it is you're playing with an idea. This is mental play, playing with an idea. It's difficult to play with a fact. Facts you don't play with. Facts are just facts. An idea, a fanciful idea, something bizarre and funny. That's something you can play with. You can manipulate different aspects of the idea, of the, the fantasy. And those manipulations will impact other things. And that's the idea of this listen, move, think way of approaching your questioning and provoking thinking.